book, and I think does a nice job breaking apart in subjects. I'd like to begin reading. It's called The Life Point Review. So listen, and then we're going to talk about emotions. It says, our emotions are powerful. We can be paralyzed by fear and depression or ecstatic because of a good memory or a joyful experience. In order to become truly wise, we must learn to understand our emotions. I want to say that, I want to read that again because I think the writer of this book does a nice job summarizing the point, the theme of what we're studying today. Emotions, the emotional roller coaster is the title of the lesson. Listen carefully again to what the author says. Our emotions are powerful. We can be paralyzed by fear and depression or ecstatic because of a good memory or a joyful experience. In order to become truly wise, we must learn to understand our emotions. Emotions can control a person. They will defeat you in different ways, either sad, depressive uh, types of emotions, or uh, someone's ecstatic. We go through a roller coaster of emotions. How can fear, the emotion of fear, how does that influence even a Christian's behavior? Anyone? Can keep you from doing what you need to do and hold you back. All right. Thank you. Even more specific. In, in what way? There's many ways, but let's just name one. Um, I don't know. I think a big thing for myself sometimes is fearing the wrong things and fearing what others will think of me when God is trying to get me to do something and calling to me and I'm in fear of what others may think or how they may respond. So it keeps me from doing God's work. Very well. Very well said. Thank you. So fear can cause a Christian to stumble your emotion. If we don't learn to control fear, how, how about on the other hand, how, how about ecstatic emotion. Anyone? For example, I'll just put something silly, not so much silly, but let me throw this out there. Um, you have the emotion of you get a new job and you start getting, let's say, your income increases by 25%. And what happens in some cases is that you start spending 75% more then you had it. You start getting credit cards, and before you know it, you have a mountain of debt, debt that it's almost impossible to ever recover. Suddenly, you become a slave to debt, all because you didn't control your emotion that you had a new job, and instead of, with wisdom, taking in a blessing from God, a new job, it's, you've allowed your emotions uncontrolled. They've now destroyed you. So emotions can either high or low. Sometimes they can destroy a person. They can hinder your walk with God. And so uh, we know a lot. We've talked about, uh, I won't name names right now in the video, but a person that was brought up before here, uh, Sunday school started, a person who's fighting depression, sadness. And sadness can capture people's lives. People who are sad, uh, their, this emotion can control them. They try to escape it. What do they do? What are some things that people do to try to escape sadness? Anyone? Turn to alcohol. Turn to alcohol. They try to address the symptom. Right? They try to address the symptom. God does more than treat the symptom. God goes to the heart of the matter. And that's the book of Proverbs. He goes to the heart of the matter. But here's an interesting scripture. And I, I turn... Proverbs 14, chapter 12, the heart knows its own bitterness. It goes on to say, and a stranger really can't even understand the joy of a person's heart. So it says that in a person, a person's complex, their emotions are complex. We talk about people that are fighting sadness and depression. And sometimes I know in my life, that we're almost hypocritical. That is, we try to judge people by our own behavior. For example, for example, um, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I just want to use this example. Sometimes I, I'll get frustrated with somebody and, and think, why don't you get up? Why don't you get up and get out and 
do something and get out of that, you're, serve, you're serving yourself no purpose. I know someone dear to me years ago, and I would often get frustrated because they would sit in the room and they would fight depression. And I'd say, why don't you just get up and, and fight it? Why don't you get up and get busy? And I've gotten older and God's helped me understand that I was being one a hypocrite because I didn't understand the heart knows its own bitterness. Sometimes a person's bitterness is so deep and rooted in a person's mind that you and I, we need to be sensitive to that. My dad, I love my father. I just use this as an example. Sometimes the things he would say to me and my brother, he would say similar things to my brother and I, but I would say that maybe I'm just a foolish, just carefree kid growing up. A lot of the things he'd say to me, I'd think, wow, that was so hurtful. And eventually it would just roll off me. I'd laugh thinking, where in the world did he come up with that? But my brother wasn't that way. My brother would take it in the heart and say, am I really stupid? Am I dumber than a box of rocks or the things dad would say? And it would be very hurtful to him, and I can't say I enjoyed it, but I was a different person. What I'm saying is, when you speak, when I speak to someone, we need to be not so judgmental, but we need to be empathetic and realize that a person's character, their emotions, their heart is different. Each person is different. And what you may say to one person may just roll off their back. But your words to a different person, they may be so bitter and going through such sadness, whatever the matter. You may say, I don't get it. They, they ought to get over it. They ought to move on. You know, they broke up with a girlfriend or a girlfriend broke up, whatever. They're going through a, a relationship that broke apart. And someone says, they don't need to get over it. But you know, some people just don't get over it so easy. And other people who say, well, I, I know someone dear to me now that's fighting alcoholism. And for me, I've had a lot of weaknesses in life, but that was never one of them. That was never something that I just had a desire to go out and just drink and drink. That wasn't my weakness. I, I, I got plenty I can write about. I don't want to say I'm perfect. I'm by no means. Uh, but here's the point. It's easy for me to say about that person. I don't get it. You're wrecking your cars. You're wrecking your life. And, and on and on. That's what a lot of people do. I had a dear, dear friend of my family. I had to go tell his mother uh, that he drowned in a river. He had fought in war. He was a decorated soldier. But he struggled with alcoholism. And I thought, why didn't you just quit? Well, Sometimes we need to realize that a person's emotions, they run deep. And what's troubling that person is going to be different than this person. And as a Christian, before we lash out and judge somebody and say, hey, what's your problem? Get over it. Get up. Move on. Sometimes we need to step back and say, maybe I'm just not fully understanding. That person's complex. Their emotions... And the problems they're having with depression or whatever it might be, that addiction they have, I need to be more, I need to be more kind and patient. I fail in that regards a lot of times. But everyone's different. And I think this is one of the, the emotional roller coasters people go through because we as Christians, we need to be careful as we, we must present the truth. We must present God's counsel. But we have to do it out of love and not to be judgmental. There's a difference, right? I could say to Fred over here, I could tell him the same thing, but if my heart is, I'm getting frustrated, I say, Fred, come on, you've made this mistake 30 times. What's wrong with you? And then I tell him to get do something. See, that's the wrong advice because God wants me to present in patience and kindness. And when I do that, I still share the truth, but it's not to tear him down but to build him up. You see, and if I do it with a face of judgmental and anger, that can really hurt a person. But when I present to you the truth, but in my face you can see this person's concerned about me. This person, they love me. There's a difference, right? A mom who sits down with their kids and they tell them the truth. And sometimes the truth still hurts. But a kid who sees their mom's face and that sweet smile and say, you know what? 
mom's doing this because she loves me. I remember a preacher one time said, he said that he was, uh, his father worked on the railroad. And this goes back many years. And he said, my father was the one that disciplined us. And he disciplined us with a belt. And I got a belt with him one time. And that's not a good memory, but you remember it. And he said, my dad would give me the whip, right? And he would be the one that carried out punishment. And he said, but dad was on the railroad. And I did something. He said, that I, it was bad. I can't remember the story. But he did something that had to be addressed, not when his dad got home, but right now. And he said, my mom took me out to the woodshed. And she said, I guess your father, I remember the story so well. Uh, he said, my mom looked at me and I said, I guess if your father was here, he'd give you a whooping. And he'd say, yeah, mom, I guess he would, <laughs> right? And, he, and she said, well, let's, let's go out here. So she took him out to the woodshed and she, she said, she looked at him and she said, I'm going to give you a whooping because that's what your dad would do. And I don't want you to do it again. And she said, I really don't want to do it. And he said, uh, it, he was such a good storyteller. I remember him saying, it, he goes, I looked at my mom and I said, I wished you weren't going to do it either. <laughs> and she said to me this, she said, I'm doing this because I love you. And it's going to hurt me more than it hurts you. Wow. Isn't that something? But I think that's the kind of love and discipline God gives us. Sometimes we need a good woman. But know this. God never enjoys giving his children a woman. But it's always done out of love for our own good. We need to, when we're giving a person a counsel, we're giving them advice, let's be sensitive. We don't know really what's in their heart. I shared a story sometime years ago about a man who had a difference with me. And he was fairly aggressive towards me. We got to talking, and uh, he came over and started crying to my house. And he said, you know, it's been tough for me. Because I was mad. If anybody come close to getting a good punch, and I thought we were going to throw him down in the yard. And I'll be honest with you, I did. I thought, boy, he's pushing my buttons here, and I'm, I'm trying to back away, but he, he's, we're about to throw down here in the side yard. That would be interesting. But anyway, he came over, and he said, you know, I struggle with anger, and he's crying. And he gave me the biggest hug. He said, would you please forgive me? He said, you know, two years ago, I don't know, I lost my son in a car wreck. I said, I didn't know. He said, the year before that, I lost my other son. My sons are all gone. And it's really, I said, I struggle with alcohol. I get mad and bitter at God. And I'm sorry that I, I did that. I, I was, that was not me. And I thought, wow. You know, I was ready to fight. But then I thought, that's a good lesson. Because sometimes that person that you're so angry at, I know it's difficult, but as a Christian, we need to sometimes say, God help me to be patient because maybe I'm not seeing what they're going through. I know of another girl that uh, would sing, oh, wow, she could sing. Boy, this girl could sing in church. And one Sunday she got up, and before she could sing, she just broke down. She was exactly my age. And I thought, what is going on? She would get up in front of the church, and I mean, she, her, her voice and her heart we just capture people. She, I just, everyone loved to hear her sing. And she stood up to sing that Sunday. And she started crying. And she goes, I can't sing today. I'm sorry. She said, so and so has passed away. And I'm really happy about that. And then everyone was like, what in the world is going on? And she said, my dad's brother would often take care of me while mom and dad would go out on their dinner dates and things. And he raped me over and over again all my life. And he died. And she said, I am so happy he's dead. And I thought, now, someone will say, well, wow. You know, what a horrible thing for her to get up and do. You know, a lot of probably people were judging and thinking about that. But I thought, after the fact, wow, she's been through a lot. Who would know her bitterness, right? Who would know what she might say? I'm sure she didn't plan that morning to get up there and tell everybody. She got up there to sing. But her emotions took over. And before, as a church, a lot of people say, well, we're not going to get her up there again. Well, let's be careful. Because only her heart knows its own bitterness. Yeah? 
It's true. Let's keep going on. Look at verse 13. Does everybody have Proverbs open now? 14, chapter 13. Chapter 14. Let me say it again. I don't know what I'm saying. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 13. You don't know my emotions today. <laughs> verse 13. Even in laughter, the heart may sorrow. That's interesting. Isn't it? Sometimes people put on a laugh, but sometimes deep in their heart, there's a lot of pain, a lot of sadness and sorrow. You ever know somebody that loves to just go out and buy new things all the time? They go out and buy a new car. It's the best car I've ever had. I'm going to love this car. I'm going to drive it until it gets 500,000 miles on it. Next week, that car's gone, and there's another new car. Or someone, you know, they just have all these different things they're doing. But you know what they're doing is they're trying to address a symptom. There's bitterness, perhaps, sorrow, emotion in the heart. They're putting on laughter. They're doing things that are only temporary. You know, they're doing things that are enjoyment just for a season, for a week, a month. Just because down deep, there's this agony, this misery. There's this wrestling that they're going on with an emotion. And they're trying to cover it up. But you know what? Down deep, there's still that hurt. There's still that root cause of a problem. The point is, is only Jesus, before this, before we leave here today, only Jesus, only He can share for a person's heart. I can't do that with you. I tried to land and now here's my son and I like to think that I could share his burdens, but only Landon knows his bitterness, and only Samantha and Candace, they know their bitterness, and Ed and everyone that's here today, as an individual, really, you may have close friends, but you know, sometimes even a close friend may misunderstand what you're going through and say the wrong things, but the truth of this message, Proverbs, is this, God knows the heart. And God knows you very well. We're going to get to that in a minute. But I don't want to close this lesson. Because it sounds like, well, I'm all alone. But you're not alone. You're not alone. God knows that trouble that you have. He knows the person's sadness. He knows all their emotions they're going through. And God cares. He is the burden carrier. That's why the Bible says that he is like a sheep. All we have gone and scattered in, in fear and emotion, right? That's what happened the night Jesus was crucified. All of his disciples, they all denied him one way or another. And they ran out to the darkness. Even Peter cursed Jesus. They, cur they, they denied Christ. But Jesus, he never denied them. He loved them. And he knew all their individual problems they were going through, their emotions. Emotions got the best of them that night. Yeah? Emotions got the best of Peter, got the best of John. All the, the disciples, they were fearful and they let emotions take control. But Jesus knew each of their hearts and he knew the fear. He understood what they were carrying deep inside. He never quit on them. We're going to sing a song today. I can't wait. I hope you enjoy it as much as me. When you sing it today, you say, I don't know why you're so excited. This song speaks so much of Paul Adams. When you, sing, when you hear me sing it today, all of us, you're going to say, I get it. Because he's often talking. It's a, a song that says, you never let go. You never let go of me. And that's the whole point of what I'm trying to get at today. God's word teaches your emotions, sometimes they get the best of you. But God doesn't let go of you. He knows where you're running. I'm going to share this story here soon. Uh, we're going to begin a new series of messages on Sunday. Not today, but coming up soon. It's called The Questions of the Bible. And here's one question my dad asked me, because he knew I was going through something, but he didn't understand why. One day I was running outside. I'd go running for hours. And I came in, and I stopped on this front porch. And my dad, who was not a philosopher, but he said something to me that day. I always remember this question. He said, son, he never called me son. He said, uh, I'd like to ask you two questions. And I thought, okay. He said, number one, what are you running from? And number two, where are you running to? I thought, wow. 
And I said that, I couldn't even respond. I've always remembered those two questions. Son, what are you running from? And two, where are you running to? Good questions. Yeah, they're good questions because he knew in my heart, he could see it in his son, I was troubled. He knew there was a problem. I had some bitterness. I had some struggles deep down. And dad picked up, he picked up. Those were two good questions. And he left me with that and walked away. Let's keep going on. Sometimes people try to hide their emotions. They put a fake, they put an artificial face on. They laugh. They, they try to do things to try to address some of the problems. Look at chapter 14, verse 30. So for chapter 14 has a lot to say about emotions. Look at verse 30. A sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. In another translation, let me read verse 30 as well. Listen carefully. A tranquil heart is life to the body, but jealousy is rottenness to the bones. When a person has peace in their heart, is it good for their mind? Yes. Is it good for the body? Yes. You know, a person is healthy on the outside, not because of the physical exercise and not because of the good diet. Those things, they make a little difference. But a person who has a good countenance, that is a good, true face of happiness and gladness, that's when they have peace and tranquility in their heart. That's where God's living and they're walking in step with God. They're turning life over to God. They're putting their faith in the Lord. They're getting good encouragement from others. Their church that they belong to, they're getting good instruction, getting good Bible studies. They're applying God's word. They're being obedient to God at home. They're getting good instruction from mom or dad or wife or brother, husband, whatever. You see, the point is, there's many contributors to a tranquil heart. There's many things that factor into a, a peaceful heart. But when there's peace in the soul, it will show itself on the outside. And what, that's what Proverbs is saying is a person, they can have a lot of bitterness. And unless God deals with that bitterness with that person in their heart, then they're always going to have this problem of emotions. And emotions will tear a person's life apart. I've known some people so dear to me, and myself included, but I've, so, I've known some people, they were the most smartest people I ever met, true. But their lives have been nothing but years and years of misery because of depression. They have fought sadness, worries, anxiety, even over religion. Even over religion. Am I going to heaven today? I've, I've seen people worry about that, saying, I'm, I'm so worried. God, I don't think God will ever let me go to heaven. I'm the worst person to ever live. And they, they, but, but when they, they're in church, they got a laughter on their face. But deep down, there's no laughter. They just don't like to talk about it. You see, only when there's peace in the heart, and I hope you're listening today, is there peace in your heart today? That's only God, the God of peace and comfort. When there's peace in your heart, then there will be good health in a person's outside, right? There's some people, they got such anger built up. You know why? Because they don't have peace in their heart. There's some people, they're alcoholics. Ed, you mentioned that. That's an example. There's some people today, they're alcoholics. You know why? Because there's a great emptiness in their soul and there's no peace in their heart. There's people today who are bankrupt. They're buying everything they can because they're trying to satisfy an emptiness in the soul. But things of this world can't satisfy the soul. Only God can through Jesus. Let's keep reading. A lot of good lessons here today in the book of Proverbs as always. Look at chapter 15 and verse 13. Chapter 15 and verse 13. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance or face, but by sorrow of a heart, the spirit is broken. Wow. Isn't that something? You can have the best job. You can have all the money that you could put in your bank. Now think about this. You can have the nicest automobile, your Audi out there in the parking lot. You can have all these examples, but if there's sorrow in your heart, bitterness in your soul, 
It will destroy you eventually. It will destroy you. Only when there's a cheerful heart. How do you get a cheerful heart? Well, the book of Proverbs talks a lot about it. We've been studying Proverbs. It gives us the, the, the road map to having a cheerful heart. And that begins when a person puts their trust in God. And they have a deep respect for God. That's what it means. The Bible says the beginning of wisdom is what? The fear of the Lord. It means to have a great respect, to have a great admiration, a reverential awe for God, to put Him first. And what happens is my life begins to be built on a solid foundation. And when my heart is built upon God's Word, and when I'm being obedient and faithful to God's Word, what happens? I begin to have a cheerful heart. You know the things that once worried me? I worry about them. Fred and I were talking about that. Yes, you know. After even even now, I'm learning all the time. I'm learning all the time. Even after that little crazy accident down the sled, I lay there on my back in the hospital, and I got home, and I was looking around the house, and I thought, you know, I get way too concerned about things that really don't matter. What if I lost it all that day? Let's say that the doctor who said this to me, and that this is this is true, she said. And examining my nerve damage, she said, probably, if you would have just had a few inches from impact, you hit with such force, it would have shattered your neck, and you would have been paralyzed from the, from the uh, neck down. And she said, that's true. She said, there's no doubt about it. You hit with such force, it did such damage to your body, that if you had landed at a different angle, it would have destroyed your neck. And I thought about that as I left there. And I'm not happy I got hurt, of course, but yet there's always wisdom in life that God gives us. And that wisdom is this, weigh out really what matters, weigh out really what makes a person happy. And if this physical life is the only thing that makes you happy, then you're truly not walking with God. True? It's easy sometimes, this is what I've learned. I've learned this. It's easy to walk in here and someone says, well, Paul looks like he's so happy in the Lord. And I say, well, oh, I've got a, I own my own car. I've got a house. I always, I've never had to beg for food. And I've got a, a good job. I've got insurance. And you know, it's, and I wonder how much of what I express as happiness and laughter in church, is it truly because I'm just a result of blessings or is it because I know the blesser said it? Is it really sometimes, because we make a mistake sometimes. We say, I got a car, I got a job, and all these things, I'm blessed by God. Okay, that's true. Those things are from God. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father above. But here's, here's the point. How about the person, let's say, in a foreign country today? And they're a Christian, and they're being persecuted. They don't have a job. They don't even... They're, right now, they don't even have a loaf of bread. They're in prison today because they were sharing the word of God. And now they're in prison and they may even be beat to death today. That could be happening somewhere in the world today. Very well, right now. And one would say, well, are they blessed of God? Yes. We got to be careful sometimes because if we promote or share, the idea is... You're blessed by God if you have on a nice suit jacket and you got a nice car. If you don't have those things, you're not blessed by God. Never be confused. The gladness of your heart should not become, oh, I've got all these blessings. But it should always be this. I'm happy today. I have gladness in my heart because I know the blesser. That's God. Amen. Amen. Right. That person you described, that is happening in the name, maybe even in this country. Right. Even in this country. Right. Jesus told us. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's blessed. Blessed is one who's persecuted. Well, let both do, right? right. <laughs> yeah. Both do. He makes both do. And that person right now would probably, if they could stand here, would say, I am so blessed because I am truly, truly representing Jesus. We need sometimes to understand what it means to be blessed. And we've got to be careful sometimes if it's all these things of the world. We gotta be careful because what if you lose all those things? You go down that crazy sled and you and you lose it all, right? 
and you end up in a wheelchair and you're sitting there in a wheelchair, now suddenly are you laughing and are you smiling? If you are, then praise God because you've learned the secret of life. It's not about having all these things. It's about knowing God. Yeah. You should, you, we should be able to say, right now, if had to be, I'd lose it all for his sake. And I'd still be as happy and I'd still be as satisfying than I was before. But the problem is, I know in my life as Christians, we, we like the enjoyments of the flesh. We, we like it, right? We like to enjoy the things that bring us money and all those enjoyments. We've got to be careful. Because... We're going to feel sorry for those who don't have God. That's right. I mean, we're going to make this... No matter where you are, if you need to die, if you fall out as a preacher or even the Pope or whoever you think that is, don't think that they don't have these emotions, these feelings. That's right. You know, uh, you're going to be foolish. You're not going to take correction, right? I yeah. Mean, you know, uh, that's, that's one of the things of being wise. Paul Adams goes, he says, Fred, you're, you know, I love you, brother, but, you know, you're doing this, I'm hearing this. You may not understand. You may understand it better than what I tell you. But if it's true what you're saying, I have to be smart enough to take the correction yeah. when it came from God. And that's when it gets real difficult. Right. Our ego, our ego, we talk about yeah. our ego separates us from God. Yeah. You know, You're right. and every day, every day. And, then, and I think one of the problems, first of all, God can make this real easy. He could show up here right now. He could, he, he could get in the clouds and say, here I am. Right? Right? There's no more faith that's bad, right? Right. <laughs> if we're all slaves to God, right? He wants us to live by faith, right? You know, this book, I love you teaching the kids how to this book. And I've learned a lot. I think I've learned more than two kids. And if you want to this book, it's very, very, if, if you ever read any of the Old Testament, I'd say read yeah, it's, it's incredible. Uh, I mean, there's, it's, it is. It's an answer to life. But like I said, I think ego separates us with the community of God. Yeah. And there's emotions. And I'm, I'm a super emotional guy. I'm, I'm very emotional. I feel it, but I, I, I have an emotional imbalance. You know, uh, I can be very emotional. I can be really up, really down, and God kind of puts me there. Uh, right. You know, where I don't overreact to the good things anymore as much right. as I did before. But when I do make that mistake, He's there with me. He, he knows, you know, yeah. we kind of cut ourselves a slack, too. Right. You know, uh, got to be able to say, like your friend who came to your house. Yeah. That's strong. That is strong. That yeah. man, that, you know, how many times could I have done that to people? How many times could I have went to this person's house and said, man, I'm sorry. Right. I, that's good. It is that good. good. Yeah. Humility is the biggest thing we can do when it's yeah. true. Good points. Uh, we're going to have to close here, but look, look at. Um, well, there's a lot of things to talk about, but uh, which one of these I'd like to, to close. Look at chapter um, 25 and verse 20, and then we're going to have to close. Maybe we'll touch on a few more of these because it's such an important subject matter that we're talking about today. Chapter 25 and verse 20. Like one who takes away a garment in cold weather, and like vinegar on soda, you know what happens then? What happens? It explodes. You ever take vinegar and pour it on soda, baking soda? Is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. What that means, what it says, I think, is so important. we got to be sensitive sometimes when someone's hurting. You know, here's an example. My father, when he passed away, is very painful. Death sometimes can be very painful for a person. Right? For me, it was in different ways. Of course, the loss of a friend, a father. A lot of blame I put on myself. I was doing CPR on him, and he died while I was in the middle of CPR. That was painful. I thought of a different way as I felt dad and not listen to his instruction about laziness and truthfulness. And I felt like dad, you left him. I should have got them right. 
and I didn't. There's a lot of emotions I was having. What I didn't need at this time, I didn't need this. Is somebody come in and say, come on, let's rejoice and have a party. Your dad went to heaven. You're acting silly. That's what somebody did. They came from church. She grabbed hold of me and said, you're acting silly. Whispered in my ear. She said, your dad's up there dancing the jig with Jesus, and you acting silly. You ought to get up and let's all be happy. I'm telling you, let's get happy. I didn't need that right now. Sometimes we need to be careful. Someone's going through a lot. You see it. They're broken. Don't say, well, that's silly. I know what they're going through. I could go through that. You don't know what you can go through, right? You don't know how you're going to react. You may react differently. I may react differently to the same situation. But that's not up for you and me to judge that person. You see someone broken and their life is right at that moment shattered in their heart. They don't need you to come up and say, hey, I'm going to sing you a song. You know, let, you're silly. Get up. Let's move on. Let's laugh. Let's have a party. Know what they need at that moment is you to put them, maybe just to sit there in silence and say, I don't know what to say to you. I know you're going through a lot. You just lost a loved one. Maybe it's a child. And instead of saying to them, come on, you need to get your child with God. What are you so sad about? Well, until you go through the loss of a child, you never know how you're going to react. Maybe all you need to do is sit down next to them and say, I know you're going through a lot. I just want you to know I'm right here for you. I'm going to be silent. And I'll just sit here with you. And if you want to talk, I'll talk. If you want to cry, you know what you're going to do? You're going to cry with them. Here's someone read real quick in closing. Romans chapter 12, verse 15. Would someone open that up and read it for us real loud and we'll close with that. Romans chapter 12 and verse 15. How does it say we should react? Listen carefully. I think Samantha's got it. We'll close with this verse, but mark it in your Bibles. How does it say we should react? Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Yeah. And that's something. Someone's weeping. You need to get in their heart with God's help. And if they're crying, then you cry with them. I was there with some virus, and I did that one time. To this day, that person thanks me so much. Yeah. Yeah. Tragic and so on. Yeah. And I didn't know what to say. You know, they're calling me. They say, we got to come. We got to come. We got to leave. We got to do this. We got to do that. And I did. And I felt like I told you, you just said just about probation. They say there's a day. He speaks to someone about me mm -hmm. if they come back and tell me. Yeah. He never lost my son. Right. Mm -hmm. And and I think the important lesson Paul for me and everybody else is a lot of times when those things happen, we try to make it about us. Yeah. See so the that person that come in and told yeah. me to dance it, oh I straight and fall down to you. Know, yeah, right. I got to play the will. It's not about us. And when, when things happen, people Myself, people, because they don't, they just need to do it. And right. know that you're there. Right. That's just, you know, Fred's there, Paul's there, and Fred's there. Yeah. That's, that's really it. That's, that's I think, I just heard you say that, and that was like verbatim. Yeah. I think it's a wonderful, I think the Proverbs, as, as Fred said, what a good book to read, and to read it continually. So thank you for being here today. I hope we all enjoyed being together. Let's go up and, and uh, learn more about the Lord, I hope.